Um, so I'm Kevin Robinson. I'm the VP of Marketing for Wi-Fi Alliance. And so we're here at CES, and you're kind of preaching the word of a, a new product that you have called uh, Wi-Fi Halo. Can you tell me about that? Absolutely. We're here announcing a name for a new technology called Wi-Fi Halo that is going to deliver lower power, longer range Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, and this is going to be a great solution for the Internet of Things. It's something that you're seeing, obviously, all around the showroom floor. Wi-Fi is already very much part of the Internet of Things. I mean, it's the, it's the primary way people connect today, especially in the home. And with Wi-Fi Halo, we're going to be expanding that Wi-Fi portfolio to deliver this longer range, longer range Wi-Fi. So just imagine that in your home, you know, maybe you live on the East Coast and you're in brick construction and you want to put sensors in your basement, uh, maybe even sensors out at the end of your driveway. With Wi-Fi Halo, you're going to be able to do that. That device is going to be able to communicate directly back to your network provide and, and operate very efficiently with power. So think of a sensor that's going months or even years on a single charge. Uh, so, I mean, that's kind of gaining some in industry momentum and the industry has been growing, you know, mm -hmm. over the last year or so. Uh, and you're hitting some milestones as far as device shipments. Can you tell me what's driving that? Absolutely. So you, you mentioned this momentum. We just passed 12 billion ship devices shipped uh, in 20, you know, at the end of 2015, with almost 7 billion that are still in active use today. Uh, we're going to hit 15 billion by the end of this next year. Uh, and what's really driving that is a lot of a lot of innovation going around, going on in just core connectivity, kind of the 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 thing Wi-Fi has been doing for 16 years. Uh, we have in, in 2016, busy year. Uh, a second wave of features for Wi-Fi certified AC that are going to make your networks even higher performing and allow much greater capacity in the network. Um, so in, a, in an environment like this at the Consumer Electronics Show, uh, you have, can have a network that you know, simultaneously can actually serve multiple clients. So great for service providers that have to deal with very dense deployments of, of, of clients. Uh, in addition, we have YGIG certified coming out in 2016, which will provide multi-gigabit connectivity within the room. So think about uh, you know, streaming HD content from a set-top box or a Blu-ray player to your TV, or even a wireless docking scenario where you, know, you walk into your office, set down your laptop, and it immediately connects to your display and all of your peripherals without having to plug anything in. Um, and then finally in, in 2016, there's gonna be a program coming out around location. So easiest way to explain this is it's indoor GPS using Wi-Fi networks. So it's another one that would actually be very nice to have here at CES as we've been trying to find uh, some of the locations for our meetings. Maybe next year. Maybe, maybe that would be great. <laughs> Speaking of, well, I mean, we just turned the page on into 2016. What predictions do you have for Wi-Fi moving forward into this year? In 2016, we predict that it's going to be smart everything. Again, you can't, you know, you can't make it 20 feet on the showroom floor without hitting something that is a connected device, uh, and that's certainly going to be uh, come to fruition even more so in 2016 with, uh, you know slow cookers and just any you know washing machines and any type of device you expect to see in your home and they're all going to have connectivity and have built-in intelligence. Um, another thing we see happening uh, absolutely is Wi-Fi is going to be everywhere you want it to be. Wi-Fi is ubiquitous today uh, and it's only it's only going to grow. Um, it's you know kind of interesting that now in, in automobiles, Wi-Fi is almost becoming a standard feature where people want connectivity in their cars. They want it on trains. They want it on planes. Uh, just recently, Air China and JetBlue have both announced that all of their all of their aircraft are going to have Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, so it's going to be be a great year there for when you're out and about and need to connect. Uh, and then finally, 2016 is, is certainly going to be a year where we make progress on protecting use Wi-Fi users and unlicensed spectrum. Um, it's some, you know, Wi-Fi Alliance has, um, it is playing a very central role in resolving many of the concerns around how we protect users of Wi-Fi, and, and we're optimistic going forward. We have the, all, you know, virtually all of the stakeholders that are, the, um, are involved in this, this whole discussion, um, they, they all understand that you need to protect existing users of Wi-Fi. And based on that, that, that core underlying principle, they all agree that we need to develop a test regimen to make sure that that fair sharing happens. And they also agree that that work needs to happen in Wi-Fi Alliance. And in fact, the work is already underway. Do you think 2016 is going to be the year that it, that gets cleared up? You know, it's, there's still a lot of work to do. 
uh, but we are certainly making progress because we have, we have that consensus of this is the path forward. Here's how we're going to get there. And Wi-Fi Alliance absolutely has a strong track record of, of solving those difficult technical problems and bringing competing companies together to do that. Um, so we are optimistic and we're gonna have some, uh, probably some very, um, we're gonna have some updates on, on the progress that we've made to date in, in early February. Uh, anything else you wanna say? Uh, no, just that uh, you know, 2016 is going to continue to be a great year for Wi-Fi, just like it seems every every year prior, uh, and we're we're excited to see what what it has in store for us.